Thank you all for joining us for this first electronic edition of Court Times. Chief Justice Rush, I certainly appreciate you agreeing to do this interview. You know, it does make me think of what's now darn near 20 years ago that I was a reporter in your court asking for an interview for the local news media. And here we are, I'm still asking for an interview. It has to make you think of that as well. Yes. Oh, Catherine Dolan, I, it's in the 2000s. I'd have some high profile cases where decisions of mine maybe were not very popular and she'd be showing up and with a little FOIA request. Um, but she really liked the law. She rolled up her sleeves and learned about it. So I think it's funny. I think it's, you know, I think it's in here we're working together. And even though we're apart, we talk almost every day now. And we, we talk most days on the Supreme Court. You're such an invaluable person to the court family. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. That's very, very kind of you. Um, you know, we were t struggling with what to do with our Indiana Court Times, which we love publishing and getting out to the trial courts, but we realized that just wasn't realistic at this time. And so we were inspired by all of these video uh, remote conversations taking place to go ahead and add a video element to our electronic court times. And you've certainly been a part of many, many remote conversations over the past month, month and a half. You uh, joined managers, you've joined your colleagues across the country. What have you found illuminating about these remote conversations? Well, I like to see the faces. I mean, we started off doing telephone conferences with my colleagues and said, no, you're going to learn to, we're going to, we're going to, I want to see you. I want to see you. There, there's a beauty to being able to see. I, mean, I think it's very isolating in the middle of a, a pandemic. And I think you need to see, and then you've got some of the capabilities with regard to um, like teams, we can share documents. If I'm working with my staff and we're kind of going through an opinion and looking at some words, you can do that. So um, I spent a lot of my days on conferences, whether it's with other chief justices, whether it's with the managers, whether it's with judges, my colleagues, um, a chunk of my day. I get up really early to do my legal reading, um, and then I spend a lot of my days in these kind of meetings. Right, really in everything that we do, you help remind us of the, um, of the importance of public access and accessibility to the courts. And I know that's on your mind as we look at balancing that public safety with open access. You're just trying to weigh those things? Yes. Um, you know, we have a lot of rules on this too. I mean, it's it's constitu it's a bedrock of our constitution. So it's it's that that we have open and accessible courts. And today, which um is the twenty second of April, we just set out some solutions for that. And you know, did I ever think there'd be a court hearing on YouTube where you put your hearing up so you can meet the public access and then it comes down right afterwards and you gotta say don't broadcast it. But um, we're sort of patching things together the best we can, and I'm seeing what other states are doing, keeping open with regard to these disputes, particularly during this time, domestic violence, um, contentious family, child safety, mental health. Um, I, 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 think it's, I think it's important that we be. I'm just so proud of the judiciary because I'm seeing so many novel, you know, Herculean um, efforts going on with that idea of having the courts are open. They are there to, you know, for their fundamental purpose. Um, and one of that is to be open. It, it is remarkable to look at the technology that we're using even a year or two ago, much less 20 years ago when I covered you as a juvenile court judge. It, it's absolutely remarkable. Well, you know, it was probably the first full week. Um, I was driving down to the state house and I called Frank Sullivan and I go, I got to thank you. But for the work you did, all the groundwork you did on court technology, we would be shut down right now. I mean, I look at the Judge Matthias, I look at Steve David. I mean, I look at just the the amount of people, the, you know, I thank the legislature, but the fact that in the first week we had quarter million documents filed, that's a quarter million less trips to the courthouse. Odyssey, you're able to pull up your case. Remember the number is like six million hits on Odyssey. And a lot of people are looking at Odyssey, what is it, 70% on their phones. So litigants are pulling up to see what the status of their case is. What would our profession look like if this would have happened five years ago or if we didn't have that idea of electronic filing? Um, right. So doc documents can be filed, attorneys can file, you know, find out about their cases um, from their offices or their home. So yes, I'm very thankful that we've gotten the funding and the um, just cooperation of all our judges and uh, 
uh, on embracing it. Sometimes it wasn't easy. It wasn't pretty sometimes, but I just, I don't want to think where we'd be right now in the middle of a pandemic without those capabilities. It, our hearts go out to people who have a family member, a loved one who's ill or who are facing different um, financial stresses and other stressors during this difficult time. At the, at the same time, I think people are maybe considering their own physical and mental health more than they ever have before. You are a very positive person. As much as this is a terribly stressful situation, I would I would have to believe you probably would think we're going to come out on the other end stronger. What do you what do you see for for us in the future? Well, that's a little much, Catherine. Right now, <laughs> uh, every day you get up and think, okay, what is what is the emergency that's going to be? What is going to need that attention? That something that there is no roadmap for. I think the um, I think the capability of delivering legal services in a different manner um, we're going to keep. We've had a lot of our judges say, we want more guidance on remote technology. Why should we be transferring somebody over from DOC? Why? You know, think about a pretrial. Why make an attorney drive three hours or, you know, if you've got to add it, that. So I think we can take a look at some of these different ways of, of um, providing services and see what works. You know, you look at like online dispute resolution. Do we, do we want to look at um, ADR? Um, what are sort of the vestiges of the 19th and 20th century that we, it really is time to take a look at, but man, I want to see people. I miss them. I miss you all. Well, I agree with you. I do miss seeing people, but certainly appreciate you taking the time to talk to us electronically for our first edition of the electronic court times. I look forward to being able to, to publish one, but thank you so much, Chief Justice, for joining us. I look forward to seeing you in person and as well for all of our trial court judges across the state. So, Thank okay, you. Thank you. Bye, judges. <laughs>